when it comes to making a sequel, no matter the IP, fans are going to have some expectations going in. Namely, that a follow-up is meant to be bigger, louder, more stuffed with content than ever before. But you know what? It can also be a moment of reflection for the creative team, as if they feel they've taken a certain mechanic as far as they can, or it's coming into conflict with new visions for the franchise, they may consider dropping it altogether. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight video game sequels that removed amazing features. Number 8. Clothes Affect Characteristics Neo, The World Ends With You so if you've not played either of the World Ends With You games, then you, my friend, are missing out on a whole fantastic slice of JRPG goodness. Featuring a hefty dose of insanity through its plot of the dead competing against each other to win back their spirits or be erased from history forever, there is never a dull moment. And while drawing a lot of attention for its artwork and engaging battle system, it also provided a really unique and fun mechanic centered around clothing. You see, across all of the districts in the original game, you'll find different clothing brands, each representing a different aspect of the Chinese Zodiac. And while it's not uncommon for RPG experiences to let you purchase clothes and dress your characters, these brands actually held a lot of weight when it came to combat. You see, depending on the popularity of the brand in the area you were fighting, you would get buffs or sometimes even nerfs to your attack strength. And through completing missions, you could raise the popularity of certain brands in order to make combat situations definitely easier. As a bonus, some of the NPCs would even change their clothing to reflect the more popular brands in each area, making for a world that felt reactive to your actions. It was a brilliantly fun mechanic which, while not being game-changing, was unfortunately removed from Neo The World Ends With You. Number 7. Lack of Career Depth EA Sports NASCAR Okay, so I'll level with you. Of all the racing sports out there, the least interesting one to me personally has to be NASCAR. I get that people enjoy the speed and the endurance that it must take to compete in these races, but aside from that, it looks like the equivalent of pushing your Hot Wheels car around an oval track while really, really drunk people yell at you to crash. Still, when it comes to video game iterations of the sport, there are some absolute classics in the lineup, as fans of the NASCAR Thunder series would attest to. Here, alongside some pretty decent graphics for the time, players could create custom cars and burn more rubber than the Flash at an orgy all night long. Of note, the in-depth career modes for these games became something of a talking point, as with each passing year more and more emphasis was placed on taking your racer from rags to riches, building garages and rivalries as they went. Therefore, it was a bit of a shock when EA changed the franchise to EA Sports NASCAR and removed this feature all but entirely. Now fans were left with a much more bare-bones affair and it took a long old while to get anything close to this granular experience again. Number 6. Dual Wielding – Halo 4 as the Borderlands series has taught us, and taught us very well indeed, if there is anything better than wielding an over-the-top sci-fi gun of explosive magnitude, it's wielding two sci-fi guns of exploding magnitude. Introduced in Halo 2, the concept of dual wielding took the already stone-cold slab of awesome that was Master Chief and somehow made him even cooler. As now, this seven-foot-tall, not-so-jolly green giant could sprint into battle, fire an overcharged blast to remove an opponent's shield, and then follow up with the most overtly humiliating death of being turned into a purple and pink pincushion by a barrage of needler fire. This was doubled down on in the outstanding original trilogy capper Halo 3, with even more gun variants and ways to best your foes, but for some unknown reason, it was dropped entirely from the franchise after this point. It's a true shame as well, because it seems to somewhat remove the bull-headed charge approach to gameplay and kind of made Master Chief feel a little less threatening as a result. It was clear that Halo 4 was meant to reflect a changing of the guard, but with action that felt less hectic it left some fans simply just changing the disc to something else more chaotic. And speaking of swapping, number 5. The Hot Swap – Battlefield 3 I will never understand why this feature was dropped so quickly. You see, when Battlefield 2 Modern Combat was in early development, the creators were keen to point out an incredibly fun new feature that they were working on called Hot Swapping, in which the player would be able to freely leap between squad mates that were spread across the vast maps and take advantage of different loadouts and skills. And the feature was widely praised because of the level of tactical play that it afforded, letting players who hit a roadblock of enemy fire the ability to jump up to the rooftops at a moment's notice and clear the way for the rest of their team. Now, due to how chaotic this would have made the online component of the game, this was limited to the single-player mode, but then it was dropped entirely when it came to making Battlefield 3's campaign. As a result, there was little to make Battlefield 3's single-player stand out at all, with many critics deriding the mode as a watered-down and even boring retread of events that Call of Duty had already mastered. If they'd carried the hot-swapping mechanic over, then it would have at least made for some clever out-of-the-box thinking. But alas, this feature was in another type of box, and that was buried six feet deep. Number 4. Burning Your Enemies – The Evil Within 2 
The Evil Within was such a welcome addition to the horror genre when it landed back in 2014, because up until that point, very few titles of its ilk had received such a massive advertising push, showcasing that it wasn't just Resident Evil and Silent Hill to keep an eye on. Now, while the title itself might not have managed to set the world on fire in the ways that it promised, it certainly more than lived up to that metaphor when it came to the match mechanic that was heavily featured in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. Here, the player was given a handful of matches to burn enemies that they felled in battle. And indeed, it served multiple purposes. Namely, it allowed them to collect resources from them, save precious ammo by burning downed enemies, and in some cases, making sure that said enemies didn't bloody well get back up again. But better still, the mechanic could even be used tactically in that players could lure enemies in such a way that they would group together, shoot their legs, and then burn one body which would then spread to others nearby. However, thanks to thematic reasons with the sequel, the match burning mechanic was dropped entirely. It's a real shame as well because across the board, The Evil Within 2 fixed so many problems of the original, but seems to have deleted one of its true strengths as well. Number 3. The Entire Multiplayer Mode – Batman Arkham Knight it's something of a personal gripe I have when I see video games arrive on the scene with multiplayer modes that nobody asked for in an effort to milk the lifespan of a certain title, and even more so when that online component turns out to be bloody brilliant and is then cut adrift from the series in a one-and-done affair. You need only look at the shock surprises of Mass Effect 3 and Bioshock 2 as examples of this, but while these examples have a somewhat reasonable excuse of the multiplayer not fitting thematically with their sequels, the multiplayer mode from Arkham Origins totally should have carried forward into Arkham Knight. Now, in fairness, the fact that these came from different developers was clearly a reason why the feature was dropped, but when you look at the premium amount of fun that players were having with this mode, it was insane to not even try to include it. Hell, it would have broken up the arduous grind that were all of the Batmobile sections in the single-player mode, at least. Number 2. Cheating in Poker – Red Dead Redemption 2 when it comes to talking about sequels that removed features, I bet you hands down that nobody expected the phenomenal Red Dead Redemption 2 to have made the list, seeing as this behemoth of a title pretty much threw everything at the wall so hard in fact that it punched through to your bloody living room. Rather ironically though, you both lose that bet and actually feel cheated somewhat by having the ability to cheat in poker removed from Red Dead Redemption 2. In the original, John Marston would need to wear the elegant suit in order to sneak some extra cards up his sleeve, and it could make for some truly entertaining moments as you either swindled others out of the pot or got caught and were forced to fight for your life in deadly duels. But for some reason or another, this feature was removed from the almighty sequel, possibly making it the one gimmick that wasn't lifted from and improved on. Maybe Rockstar was worried that it would make generating money too easy. Or maybe they wanted Arthur to draw the line at conning people out of money. It's a bit of a strange line to draw, but who knows? Either way, fans felt that they were sent down the river as the devs folded on this feature. And number one, the fart button. Oddworld Soulstorm now, let it be known, I am a very simple man, and if a game lets me do something completely and utterly useless over and over by pressing a button, you best believe I'm going to hammer that feature into the ground. From twirling my lightsabers in Knights of the Old Republic to the cutesy cursing you could do in Overcooked, and of course, all of the games that let you pet pixelated creatures, if you provide me with a button to do otherwise pointless things, I'm going to let it rip. And speaking of letting rip, the Oddworld games have all featured flatulence pretty heavily in the past. Even going so far, to let players possess a fart in Abe's Exodus, yet for some reason the dev team of Soulstorm took their foot off the gas as it were as they removed the fart button. I can't express how gutted I was not to toot the bum horn of justice as Abe, and I clearly wasn't the only one, because forums were flooded with frustrated fart fans, and it was just a matter of hours before a mod had dropped allowing Abe to parp with pride. Why they removed this feature is beyond me, but it was enough to give the fandom a shart attack, so don't do this again, please. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video game sequels that removed amazing features. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C, where I do all of my streaming outside of work and Warhammer Battle Reports and all that other stuff. So if you'd like to check that out, then come swing by and say hi. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. If you in your day-to-day -day life feel that there is one aspect of your life that isn't working for you, even though that you used to enjoy it or you just don't feel like you're connecting with it properly, then don't cut it out, my friend. Speak to people about it. Try and reignite the joy you had for that passion, because at the end of the day, it's our hobbies, it's our interests, it's our passions that make us exciting and interesting human beings. I want you to grow as a person and not cut out features that used to make you happy that you may be struggling with now. Treat yourself with love and respect and get that engine kickstarted by sharing your problems with people, all right? As always, I have been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon.
Bye.